Hi, my name is Tony Parisi. I'm a metaverse and virtual reality expert, and I work as the Chief Strategy Officer at Lamina One. Now that you've learned about ways you can and will be able to communicate and collaborate in the metaverse, we're going to explore the potential implications on the environment. When we talk about the metaverse, a lot of our discussion is what it will be or might be. After all, we're in the very early stages of its development. I believe it could be a decade or more before the metaverse is fully realized. But when it comes to talking about the ecological implications of the metaverse, rather than looking forward, we're going to start by looking back. When the pandemic struck in the spring of 2020, it caused a seismic shift around the world. While first responders and essential workers bravely answered the call to keep critical operations going, including hospitals and grocery stores, millions of people found themselves at home no longer commuting and traveling. Meetings, conferences, and events that were normally held in person were reinvented for online participation through the use of video-based calls and streaming platforms. Museums like the Smithsonian created digital exhibits. Colleges and universities like Williams College and Pepperdine University developed virtual tours. And entertainers like Billie Eilish and K-pop artist Woods participated in online performances. A study shared in the National Library of Medicine in the fall of 2020 on the environmental effects of the COVID-19 pandemic showed that it caused huge global socioeconomic disruption, which directly or indirectly affected the environment, like improvement of air and water quality, reduction of noise, and restoration of ecology. In other words, more of us staying home was pretty good for the environment. If the fully realized metaverse is able to provide us with a sense of presence and shared space, it might give us the opportunity to reduce our impact on the environment by giving us options when it comes to commuting or traveling, and that might help to diminish carbon emissions from vehicles and airplanes. It's easy to think about the ecological benefits of conducting a meeting of a large multinational organization online rather than in person, or hosting a virtual global event with video-based panels and message boards. But the metaverse has ecological implications beyond just having a stay at home, rather than hopping in a car or booking a flight. Digital twins and virtual cities also offer an opportunity to reduce negative effects of construction and design on the environment. And the same is true for scientific research, innovation, and training. Experimenting and learning in the virtual world can be safer, cleaner, and more ecologically responsible. You'll learn more about both architecture and learning in the metaverse later in this course. For those who are able to participate in leisure travel, it's wonderful to get away, to explore new destinations, and to engage with different cultures. Those in-person adventures can't be beat. The metaverse will never replace the thrill of having travel experiences in the physical world. But by simulating those in-person adventures, more of us will be able to experience more of the world without leaving home, potentially reducing some of the environmental implications of travel. Consider immersive experiences like Google Earth VR, which lets you explore on foot or in the air, locations like the Colosseum in Rome, the Matterhorn in Switzerland, and Hong Kong Stadium. Now, while there are many ecological positives to the metaverse, we also have to talk about the negatives. A 2021 international study conducted by Yale University's Program on Climate Change Communication in conjunction with Facebook Data for Good showed that a majority of respondents in every country and territory are worried about climate change. So let's talk about how the metaverse might harm the environment. It takes a lot of energy to make the metaverse happen, from cloud computing to streaming data to blockchain and cryptocurrency mining. You'll learn more about blockchain and crypto in another module, but for now it's important to understand that these activities take an enormous amount of processing power. Metaverse data centers and networks need to be very big and very fast, and the energy required to support them will grow as the metaverse grows, which is why we need to make sure we're building the metaverse and its infrastructure in the most environmentally friendly way possible. One way we can reduce the ecological worries generated by the metaverse is by using renewable energy sources that will help us reduce our carbon footprint. At Meta, for example, they've reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 94% since 2017, and in 2021, achieved net zero emissions for their global operations. They invest in enough wind and solar energy to cover all their operations. One of their ambitious environmental goals is to restore more water than they use by 2030. Microsoft is pledged to be carbon negative by 2030, and has a goal of removing all the carbon the company has emitted since it was founded in 1975, 
by the year 2050. As the metaverse grows and expands, it's critical that we keep sustainability in mind. While it will give us the opportunity to replace some physical goods with digital ones and to engage in virtual experiences rather than traveling to physical ones, we have to find a way to balance those positives with the very real ecological cost of expanding the technologies that make them possible. Next up, you're going to read about the concepts of decentralization and open source platforms and what those mean for the metaverse. As with this conversation about how it will affect the environment, you'll see how we're always thinking about how to ensure the metaverse is ethical, inclusive, and accessible for all.